Hello and welcome to the fifth video in this series looking at NS Task and OSX. So this will be the final video where we wrap everything sort of together. The last video we were able to send command, we know we were because uh, the program quit. We were able to obviously then start the task as well, otherwise we wouldn't have had anything to actually quit. So in this video, it's really the meat and potatoes of the whole series, is how do we then get in this sort of chain of sending a command and reading the response and, and, and backwards and forwards like I showed in the introduction video. We do that by using something called the NS Notification Center. And it's basically a very, it's, it's, it's a wrapper for making callbacks for certain events that take place. Um, it's analogous really if you've programmed in Android to a, um, and I've, it begins with B and I've forgotten what it's called now. A broadcaster, sorry, a broadcaster. It's uh, analogous to a broadcaster in Android, so it's a while since I've done anything in Android and I've forgotten the name. Um, so what we're going to do in this is going to be a bit of copy and paste in this video to try and keep the time relatively short. Um, we're just going to use the notification center to set up um, notifications for when there is output available from the engine. So the way we do this is we get a reference to our notification center. And then all we need to do is tell this notification center that we want to be notified of something. And we do this using something called the add observer method on the notification center. And I really like the way this is set up because it's so simple. We add ourselves as an observer. We say that when we're notified, we tell the notification center what function should be called in our class for the notification. Obviously it hasn't been written yet, this get read data, we're about to write it. What we want to be called for, in this case, it's when a file handle has completed reading. And what file handle will this be? Well, the object will be a file handle for reading from the standard output of our task. So when the standard output of our task has something in it, this file handle will read it. And it's of this type here, it's a file read handle completed. So get read data will be then called. Another notification that we want to set up is we, just to do a bit of clean housekeeping. We're going to set up a notification where we're notified when the, app, the actual task has quit because we need to deregister ourselves or remove ourselves as an observer for the standard output for the task, obviously, when it's quit. It's just a bit of uh, good housekeeping to do um, because the task is no longer running. So what we'll do is we'll add ourselves again as an observer. This time we'll call the quit task function, which hasn't been written yet. And it will be for the event that is a task did terminate. And the object we're looking at here for termination is the task. So when that terminates and disappears from the activity monitor, this quit task function will then be called. The last thing we need to do, though, is before we go on to writing the actual data functions, is for this notification here, we actually have to tell it now to get going and actually start, we, well, we actually have to tell um, the, or set up a file handle to actually start reading the standard output because at the moment it's not actually reading, we actually need to tell it to start doing it. So what we'll do is, is for our task, we'll get the standard output and then what we'll say is we'll get the file handle for reading and now we just tell it to read in background and notify and this says in a background thread keep reading the standard output and then notify when something is available and the notification center here knows that when something's available it should call the get read data function now a slight improvement maybe upon this here, you'll have noticed already that we're specifying, we're assuming here that the handle returned from the standard output is the same in both cases here. It usually is, but it may be in some extraordinary circumstances it might not be. Another alternative to this would be to set up in the class actually a variable which holds a reference to this standard output here and then use continually the same one. I've done it this way. I always do it this way. In fact, um, if I have read, um, maybe it's a better practice to do it the other way and store it as a variable. Either one, you can choose obviously either one you want to do, but for this simple example, I'm doing it like this. So this is now set up to read in the background and will then be notified when there is output available. So the next thing to do now is actually to write this get uh, data function or get read data function. And the 
every time we're notified, the notification, we're supplied with a NS notification. And this comes, the NS notification comes with an object, which is what notified us, which will be the file handle. It comes also with a dictionary of data. And it's this dictionary we want to access. And if you read the Apple, Apple document, documentation, there are um, various uh, keys available to access the data. And one of them is called the NS file handle notification data item key. So if I set up an NS data object here, and what I'm going to say is, is that I want from this notification, I want to access a dictionary. You can see it's an NS dictionary called user info, and this is what contains the data. And I want to then say object for key. And this is where we say, okay, we want to get the NS and the spelling obviously has to be correct here. File handle notification data item like so. And this will get us then an NS data object containing the data that was sent by our file handle from the standard output of the task. And all that remain, remains now is to declare an NS string and then initialize this string with this data. So NS string alloc, and then I can say init with data, and then I want our data object, and then I want to say unit, oops, data object, and then tab, please tab, thank you, NS UT, oh no, NS, I thought it was UT, yep. Yeah. UTF8 string encoding. So this encodes in UTF8 the data into our string. And now we simply need to get our delegate. And we know that we have a read in response there where we can then send to our app delegate class the response string. And then our app delegate class will write this to the text output. The last thing we need to do. Uh, this now won't be reading any longer in the background and notifying because it's read something in the background and notified us. That's the end of that. So we need to tell the object, so this file handle, to actually go back into the background. So we take our A notification and the object, and then we just say read in background and notify again to send it back into the background and wait and notify us when it gets any more output. Okay, so the last thing we need to do then is implement this quit task. And again, I'm going to be a little bit lazy here and just drop in uh, some of the code here and explain it bit by bit as it goes, just so that things zip along a bit more. So inside here now, again, we have similar structure, well, same structure in terms of the arguments. We have a NS notification. And that what we're doing is taking just the default center and removing ourselves as an observer for the task terminating notification for the task, because we've been notified now that the task has quit. So we'll remove ourselves as an observer to see when the task has quit. And the other thing we'll then do is we'll also remove ourselves as an observer for the um, file handle as well. Sorry, things have gone. I'll just line things up a little bit better there. That's uh, disappeared. So we'll remove ourselves an observer then also for the file handle read completion object. And the object that we're not going to observe anymore, obviously, on our task is the standard output because it's quit. And then last but not least, we can send our task, set our task equal to nil. And if we want to sort of be, just send something up to the console here, then we'll send to our delegate then read in response and task quit. So that should make sense how that's working. We've just set up a couple of notifiers, the main one being the get read data. And every time, and when there's something in the standard output, we're notified. And when we've dealt with that, we then tell the object, which was the file handle for the task standard output to go back and notify us again when there's something else in the background. Okay, the last but not least, what we need to do then inside our app delegate is actually set up the read in response function with the string to display the string to the um, to the GUI. And unfortunately, it's not a simple, quite as simple as simply saying, okay, the, we need, first of all, we need to append the string to the um, text view, which means we're going to use an uh, attribute, well, first of all, we need to append the string. And secondly, we need to actually um, add an attributed string to the text views text. So we'll create an NS attributed string, and I'll just call this at string. 
and this will be initialized with our response string. So we'll make an ns attributed string alloc and then we'll say just init with string. If I can type anyway, init with string and then our response. And the autocomplete obviously has left a dictionary there for me as well. Thank you very much. And then we'll simply now say to our self.ibo and it's our task output. There's a text storage we can access. And here we will then append attributed string and we append our attributed string in this way. So we add our output on rather than refreshing it each time with the new output. And the other thing we can do here now is a little trick inside here using um, NS make range. We can actually scroll to the bottom of the text box. So we're going to set um, the scroll range here unit using um, NS make range just so it scrolls automatically to the bottom of the window. So we can use scroll uh, range to visible and then we need to do NS make I think we use NS make range and then some brackets here because otherwise I'm going to get confused. Sometimes I hate on Xcode the autocomplete. It frustrates me massively, right? So NS make range, the first thing we need inside here is the self dot IBO task output the string inside there and then the length of that string is the first thing we need so the length and then we simply need to set this to a zero close off the square bracket and a semicolon and that should scroll us down to the bottom good okay so now what I can do finally is run the application and cross my fingers and hope it works so let's start the application and here you can see it's now telling us repeater says hello and welcome so let's type hello, it should repeat that back to us. Let's type dog again, it should repeat back to us. And let's type uh, numbers to see that it gives us some numbers, and it is. And last but not least, as in the intro video, let's type scroll. And now you can see that we're getting the information as it comes back from the program. And that's done. And last but not least, just quit and it's received, telling us it's received, quit, and the task has now quit. So that's it then for this video and indeed this series. Um, like I said, I'm not, I don't claim to be an expert in this or anything like that, but it's something when I've been programming a GUI that I came across and sort of pieced together from other sources and thought I'd better put it all into one place so that at least it's fairly clear how that works. So comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube. Um, thanks very much for watching.